Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmisano here. Hope you're having a great day. Back on my website, guitargate.com, to see what one of my students have posted uh, for React request. And I'm on here, and I see, I see one I just feel like clicking today. It says, Telecasters, Vince Gill, Oklahoma Borderline by Chris R., a lifetime member. Chris, thanks for being a lifetime member on Guitargate. Um, with Jerry Douglas there, he gets an honorable mention, says Chris. Uh, I know the song Oklahoma Borderline. Um, I don't know if I've seen this version, but I obviously know who Jerry Douglas is. And for all you out there that have been sleeping on Vince Gill, Vince is a monster guitar player. I'm certain whichever version this is, it looks like Crossroads, um, that we're going to see some incredible playing. So all you non-country people out there, that just or people that just maybe put Vince in a little singer-songwriter pop star pigeonhole, shame on you. Get yourself some licks. Here we go. Chris, this is for you. <laughs> So again, if you're new to this channel, uh, we're not doing note for note. It's just kind of the broad strokes of what you uh, would be thinking when you go to learn this song and you take it to your band. Quick country shuffle in G, if you will. Uh, he is not hybrid picking, it doesn't look like. I am. Uh, and, you know, he's he's doing it basically all with the pick. But your basic mojo here is this G pedaling back and forth on the sixth string to the third string where you're getting flat three to three. <laughs> Pedaling back, four, back, and then root and some variation upon which of that. So like, so, something like that, right? Now, and in between each space, when it goes to the four and five, which I was calling out there, so you got... that little flat three to uh, three snap. That's that little thing. Um, drummer and drums really pushing through here. Super duper solid. Doing a real high roll too. Um, not keeping it real close to the to the head there. Like really getting elevations, really making that snare pop. You <laughs> hear that little run by Jerry? I don't need no Texas girl dog anything around. I'm in being summer. I still been the town. So for home a city girl, all the streets are right. Tell my mom and my home. Give her that tonight. We need one good ride to be satisfied. Come on, go home up all night. If we roll out night, she be coming in the sight. And so he's getting his, his fours and fives, just pattern two, just big power chords, you know, or pattern two major chords, just like that. Um, letting the keys uh, and letting Jerry get all the different inversions and all the different flavor. He's really focused on singing this, getting this little lick in here, whenever he feels like it, and then just playing straight. I mean, you can see his G right there. Just playing straight, easy, you know, consonant guitar stuff. Soloing over the chords. That. Love it. Round two bucks in my pocket and my thumb stuck in the wind. When I cross with the ball. So he, he stopped doing the. 
right there. Again, focused on singing. So you see him go up into pattern 2G here, and he's really just keeping time with his wrist. Get that little move there. Come on, home up That run but on down. There's some little run there that multiple instruments got, but that like that is a tag. So it comes in, it's a four to a one cadence. We're not soloing over the chorus like we did last time. I love seeing Jerry smile at Vince. Um, uh, this, is a, this, is, this is a solo section just for the guitar solo, right? Comes in on the four, and you see Vince kind of go right for that root of the four chord, that C, and you mimic this, this flat three to three, four, flat three to three thing here. You see him do that. One, two, three, four. And so you got the one, four, flat three to three right there. And then you see him jump in to pattern four when it goes to imply that he's going to uh, back to the one chord, which is G. I have a whole lesson on this, but it's uh, this style is a great style to practice what I call pushing and pulling the changes. Maybe I'll leave a link to it in the, in the video, in the description. I don't know. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll forget. But if you just search my name or pushing and pulling the changes, I think a video will come up. Point is, you can go to the four before you get there. You can let the chord get there and stay on the preceding chord and then get there after the fact. Or you can change right on it. You can push it, you can pull it, or you can change right on the railroad tracks. What you see Vince do here, what you hear him do is he's in C and you hear him jump up into pattern four into g before the g gets there and then when the g gets there it's like oh yeah i've been here waiting for you this this chicken picking is perfect for this stuff right i love it sometimes i'll even let changes go by and just never address them and then just hang on the next one for twice as long like it's it's but you don't always think that you can do that right you always think oh chord change i gotta change chord change to have to change no 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 Take your time. Let it breathe a little bit. Do what you want to do. Check it out. Listen, we're in C. Right there. Right there. You hear him do this? That's C, right? You got your fifth and root of C, and then immediately goes right there to get that 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 uh, uh, flat three to three, that B flat to B, which immediately implies we're in G now, because it's the third. Remember, we're third hunting. The third creates that function. And then you get this, uh, if I remember correctly. And we're firmly in G, but the chord hasn't switched yet. Love that one. I'm going to four again. Uh. C first inversion. Here's your C major chord. First inversion means your third is in the bass. So that's E. Walk up to it. Shoot for C over here. And now flat three. Flat seven, rather. So E, B flat, C. Key thing here. What is that flat seven of a four chord? It is the minor third of your one chord. So yes, we're mixing major and minor here. Why does that work? Because the higher note, the higher third creates harmonic function. If you play a half step below that, you get a bluesy sound. So you couldn't play a major third over a minor chord 
because it would change the function. But you can play a minor third over a major or dominant chord, something with a major third, because it just adds that bluesiness because it's behind it. Higher note always wins. Remember it forever. <laughs> Listen for those roots to flat seven. It's in every chord. This is G7, C7, G7, C7. So these are these are static moments in time, if you will. So you can say as much about it if you want to, but you don't you don't have to say, oh, we're in the key of G7, and then it's C, then it's you know, you know, we're gonna have a it's C Ionian. You can do whatever you want. But listen for those. That sound should be drilled in your brain. That that's one, flat seven. Back there. It's such a hot lick, I'm not gonna be able to get this. that is all you country players out there are going to be like michael it's a textbook lick how do you not know this i only read the first few chapters of any textbook i'm working on it i'm working on it I'm right there with you so we're on four i'm hearing this I think that's wrong, but I'm pushing D to E, so nine to major third and C, grabbing G and F behind it. I think that's wrong, but we're gonna go with it. Love that move. Here's G, right? So we're on C right now, okay? So why does this work? Here's your root. I'm oh, sorry. Here's your root. So this is your fifth root, flat seven, six. So even though this B flat is G major, or G minor rather, right? It's a G minor triad. It works because we're playing C7. There it is. B flat becomes B. It becomes the major third of G now. That. I'm telling you, you guys are sleeping on Vince Gill. This is little stuff, but this dude knows where every note in each chord is. He's choosing to push and pull it. He's choosing to make it bluesier in this place or countryer in that place. I'm telling you, this is serious guitar playing with tons of taste and just it's dripping with confidence, right? Dude, dude knows it front to back. Such a great, simple, memorable line. So you see guys... I think he's doing the same lick as he was doing here. Right. That's good. That's such a good lick too. So he's doing this thing where doing double pedals on the root, we're in E, so. Just making the third and the five go down a half step and come back. 
Something like that. Yeah. Implying that full four chord. And then G minor, right? It's basically just B flat. Making it bluesier. Yeah. G minor. Yes. <laughs> yes. What did I say before here? He knows it's G minor. Why does it work? Because this minor third is the flat seven of your four chord. So what does he hit over that? That B flat? All those B flat. You do it there. Hitting on the second string, slide to it on the third string. And then when it goes to the one chord, B flat becomes B, right? B becomes now the major third. Go up one half step, B. Masterful. What makes it so great is it was already set up multiple times down here, down here, and other places on the neck. You're doing this, this constant repetition over and over again with the audience never realizing that it's happening. The whole trick to this whole thing is B flat verse B. B flat verse B. By making your C, C7, you're making this bluesy country battle with the key thing being B flat over the four chord and B over the one chord. So simple, so tasteful, perfectly executed. Love it. One step higher to C. So now we're at the root of the four chord. And then a, and then a, dude, what a run down. Everybody's got a way they get down from there, but. C, C dyad, B flat. So. Of F, piece of G. We're just going. We're going down in um in um um uh, uh G7 people. So five, four, three, two. No, we're going down in. We're going down in like F7, if you will, like C. Yeah, we're staying. Yeah, we're staying in C7, like C mixo, right? Yeah, yeah. Watch this little arm movement at the end. He's like, yeah. So slick. Owns it. He's done this. T the confidence factor cannot be overstated. Okay, I've gi I hope I've given you a lot to think about. Uh, in terms of Vince Gill and country blues playing. Um, I have to watch that a hundred more times and really sit there and learn all the notes to really figure out what he's doing, right? But the broad strokes are there. That that solo section is really G7 and C7. 
You can push and pull. You can get to one beforehand and pull it there. You can you can wait for it to get there. You can push it ahead. Sorry, you can push it ahead, or you can get there before and pull it with you, or you can change right on it. The main differences in color are B flat, which is your flat three of one and flat seven of your four chord, and B, which of course becomes your major third. That is the note that really makes the difference to bring it tonally into G7. Because remember, the major third always wins. The higher third always wins. Always be third hunting. And keeping those two things in mind, starting down here, getting up here, 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 creating little motifs that harken back to that, those two changes, um, it, that single note on two different strings, a, certainly something you can only do on guitar or on a fretted instrument rather. Um, so much fun, so cool, such a good sound. Dude is so confident, so clean, band is on fire, all those little licks in the back on keys uh, and Jerry on Dobro. Drummer, getting so much leverage on that snare. Um, really making it pop. Just just, just a killer, killer, killer track. I hope you guys all get into it and practice more country blues stuff. Um, I love it. Uh, on that note, I have a course called Country Guitar Fundamentals, which kind of gives you some of this. It's not nearly as in-depth as this, but it'll get you started. And that, along with all my lessons and all my courses, uh, all my everything that I have is on guitargate.com. And of course, just like Chris, who's taken those lessons and courses, it gives you access to this page, which lets you pick what comes next on YouTube as a thank you for letting you be, letting me be uh, one of your online teachers. If you're interested, it's the first link in the description. I'd love to see you over there. Hope you have a great day. Please hit subscribe. Please drop some comments in the comments. Let me know what parts in here stood out to you or that I think I totally butchered. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.